Hi everyone, so now we will go over the labs 5 and 6 and for the these labs since we now start object oriented programming there are two options to create the UML diagram. We can create the UML diagram using a standalone program like Violet or Amblet or Visual Paradigm and or we can actually use an online tool, a drawing tool like draw.io to create the UML diagram. I personally prefer to use a standalone tool like for instance Violet but uh, I will show you how to do the UML diagrams in both uh, kind of tools in the uh, in the two in the violet first and then how to actually draw it in draw.io uh, there are other websites that you can use like lucidchart personally draw.io seems to be very well working and I like it so for the first problem for the first implementation problem we have to implement a class rectangle to represent a rectangle uh, or multiple rectangle objects the class should contain two double data fields, width and height, that specify the width and height of the rectangle. The default value for both should be 1. A string value named color that specifies the color of the rectangle. And uh, assume that all the rectangles have the same color. The default color should be white. A no argument constructor that creates a default uh, rectangle a constructor that creates a rectangle with a specified width and height. Uh, the accessor muter uh, methods for all the three data fields, uh, width, height, and uh, color. A method get area that returns the area of the rectangle. A method get perimeter that returns the perimeter of the rectangle. Then we want to draw the UML diagram for this class using one of the UML tools above. We want to implement the class in Java. Then we want to write a test program that creates two rectangle objects and we will assign the width uh, 4 and the height uh, 40 for the first object and the width 3.5 and the height 35.9 for the second object. We will assign the color red, red to all the rectangle objects and uh, we will display the properties of both objects and find their uh, areas and perimeters. So let's start first designing this class with the UML diagram uh, designer. So we'll first do it in, a, in Violet. So for Violet, you can download uh, the jar file that basically comes with the Violet uh, Java uh, distribution. And you can start that Violet program and create a class diagram. So let's create a class. So in our case, this class is called Rectangle and it has private data fields width of the type double and height of the type double we also have one data field that is common to all the data fields let's call it uh, it's a static data field let's call it color of the type string there are no other data fields that we have to create. Uh, we cannot specify the default value, so we'll skip it in the UML diagram. And now we can con construct the default constructor and the constructor that creates a rectangle with the specified width and height. So for both, they have to be named rectangle and they are public. So rectangle, default constructor, doesn't return anything. It creates an object of this class and rectangle that takes uh, width of the type double and the height of the type double and creates a rectangle with those properties. Next, we have to create an ex accessor and mutators for all of the three data fields. So let's create all of the accessors and all of the mutators. So first we need accessors, get width, takes no parameters and returns a double, the field with that name. I will just copy it for the height. And another one that is going to be static for the color. Then 
Then we are going to create mutators for all of these methods. The width takes a double. And doesn't return anything. It modifies the internal field. And the static one that modifies the color for all of the objects. That takes a string color and modifies it for all of the objects. Let's see what else. We need to implement the method getArea. Takes no parameters and returns the area of the current rectangle. Another method getPerimeter. And that's all. Uh, we should also print the objects and uh, maybe we should also compare objects and see if they are equal. So I'm going to also implement two more methods to string, which returns the string representation of the object and equals, which checks that the current object is equal with another object O and returns a boolean. Okay, so now actually this is the entire UML diagram for the entire pro for the problem. We created the rectangle with the width, height, uh, color, and all that. Now, if you want to do exactly the same in uh, uh, draw.io, you can create a new diagram. Uh, let's say that we create a blank diagram. Uh, you can connect it with your own uh, uh, with your own uh, Google Drive. So in my case, I just connected it with Google Drive. And let's select UML. So for UML diagram, we'll take class. Let's increase the size of that class. First, the class name should be rectangle. The fields should be the ones that we created earlier. So in our case is width, height and uh, string. And we can actually write the same thing in the methods. Okay, good. So this is how basically you build it in uh, draw.io. Uh, I, I just took the values from uh, Violet, but you can actually do it the same in UML uh, in draw.io. Okay, great. In either case, you can export it as an image and basically submit it on, uh, on Blackboard if you like. Okay. So here it's how it looks at the UML diagram. Good, so now let's actually implement the class. So I'm going to create a new class in Java. New class. Let's call it rectangle. And now we are going to implement the private data fields. So everything is encapsulated. with the default value of 1, width, and height. Okay. Uh, let's also create a private static data field color. We assume that all of the Rectangles have the color red at the beginning. They all have the same color. Now we can create the constructors. They are public.
the default constructor and similarly we can create a constructor that takes two doubles Now we need to implement the accessors. So get color is a static method, returns the color of all the rectangles. Okay, let's implement the X the mutators. So they always start with set except when they are booleans then they start with is and the name of the data field capitalized okay Similarly, we are going to create a public static get color, set color. And instead of this dot color, we are going to use the name of the class. So now we access the data field, static data field set, uh, color. Next, we need to implement a get area and get perimeter methods. And the area of the uh, 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 rectangle is the width multiply with the height. And the perimeter is to multiply with the sum of width and height. Great. Good. Next, we need to implement the two string method. That returns the fact that this is a rectangle. With the width. Equal with the width. And the height equal with the height and in fact also we can specify the color equal with the color
you don't need to specify the class. I like to do that because then I know exactly that it's a static field. Now, since I said that I will also implement a boolean method, let's implement it. So boolean equals, that takes another object and compares it with the current uh, rectangle. So because this is the super class of all classes object, we need to cast it to a rectangle. So before I do that, let's actually create a rectangle R, which is a cast to rectangle of O. And then we return if R's width is the same. That's a double. We can compare it with double equal with the width of the current rectangle. And R's height is equal with the height of the current rectangle. So now we can implement a tester for this class. So now the class is complete. We have everything that was required. Uh, let's save it, create a driver or a test class. Let's call it test rectangle. And in this test class, we are going to test that class. So let's actually create multiple rectangles. R1 is a new rectangle with the default constructor. Let's print it. And if we take a look, it basically prints that that's the first rectangle with width of 1, height of 1, and color red. Let's create a different rectangle. Actually, the problem in the uh, lab asks us to implement specific rectangles. So, first has 4 and 40 and 3.5 and 39, 5.9. So, 4 and 40. And the second one is 3.5 and 35.9. And let's print them. Done. So as you can see, we basically tested that entire class. Uh, if you really want, you can actually also do a lot of other tests. So actually the problem also requires that you print their area and their perimeter. That's all. Okay. Run it. Done. Good. That's all for the first problem. Let's go to the next problem. Design a class fan that represents a fan. The class contains three constants, slow, medium, and fast, with the values 1, 2, and 3 to denote the fan speed. An integer data field speed that specifies the speed of the fan, default slow. A Boolean data field named on that specifies whether the fan is on, default should be false. A data field named radius that specifies the radius of the fan, the default is 5. A string data field named color that specifies the color of the fan, by default is blue. And then a no argument constructor to create a fan accessor and mutator methods for all the four data fields, a method to string that returns the description of the fan. If the fan is on, the method should return the speed, color, and radius in one combined string. If the fan is off, the method should return the fan color and the radius along with a, a string fan is off. We have to draw first the UML diagram for the class, then we should implement the class and write a test program that creates two fan objects. We'll assign the maximum speed, radius, uh, uh, color, yellow, and turn on the first object. And then we will assign medium, speed, radius of 5, color, blue, and turn off the second object. 
and then we'll display, display the two objects. Okay, so let's start from the beginning designing the UML diagram. So the fan class, we can create a new class diagram. Again, we are going to add a class. So this class should be called fan, has these three, three constants, slow, medium, and fast of the type integer. So this will be public, static, final, slow of the type integer, medium, and fast. And they have to be uppercase letters only. Good. Then we have to define an integer data field speed. Then we have to define a Boolean data field on. Then we need to define radius, a double, actually this speed and on should be private. Then we need to define the color as a string. Done. Now we can add the constructors. We need only one uh, in this problem, an argument constructor, then accessor and mutators for all of the four data fields. So instead of get, I'm going to use is for Boolean data fields, is on. Get radius. And get color. Then we'll have similar methods for setting the values of these data fields. So we have set speed to a speed integer, set on to a boolean on set radius to a double radius all of them return void and set color to a string color okay good so now we have accessors and mutators, and then we need to implement a method to string to describe the fan. That's it. So now we have the total UML diagram, the complete UML diagram. And again, if you want to use uh, draw.io, you can create again the class uh, in draw.io and have the same fields as we had in the case of rectangle. Okay. Good. So now we need to implement the class in Java. So let's create a new class fan. In the class fan, we are going to have the public 
static final integer slow equal with one and similar to slow we'll have the other two data fields medium equal with two and fast equal with three then we'll have the private integer speed by default the speed is set to slow the private boolean on by default is false the private double radius by default is 5 the private string color good now we can have our public fan constructor default constructor now we need accessors and mutators for all our fields so public integer get speed return speed public boolean is on return on public re double get radius returns the radius and public string get color returns the color I had a typo before good now we need mutators so public void set speed to a integer speed sets this dot speed to speed and similar to that I'm going to implement four more three more set on to a boolean on set radius to a double radius set color to a string color good next we need to implement the two string method so that's the last part We are going to return a new string that this is a fan with the given speed the given actually let's actually print exactly what is required so the assignment is that if the fan is on then the method should return the speed color and radius so if on then return fan on with the speed color
and radius else we should return the fan is off and it should return the color and the radius So let's, we have the entire class now implemented. Let me show you the entire class. This is the entire class. And now let's implement a tester. So again, we are going to create a new driver test uh, class, test fan. And the requirement is that we create two fan objects with uh, the following properties. Fan F1 is a new fan. And to this fan we are going to set its speed to the fan class fast. Radius 10, color yellow, and turn it on. And let's actually print it now. That's enough. And now we are going to do the same for the second fan. So the second fan is medium with radius of 5. the default which we don't need to change color blue and turn it off that's all run it and we are done the color shouldn't be null so let's see what we made a mistake about the set color It was a capitalized word type. Now it's correct. Done. Okay, let's see the next problem. Design a class stock, a string data field symbol, uh, the name of the stock, the double, uh, double representing the previous closing price, current price, uh, and then create a stock with a specified uh, a constructor, accessor, mutators, and then get the percentage of change of that stock. This is done exactly similarly to the previous qu uh, questions. I will not implement it. This is part of your lab. You should do it yourself. Okay, that is lab number five. Let's continue with lab number six. As you know, the string class is provided in the Java library. Provide your own implementation of the string class. You can call it my string one with the following methods. It should create a string out of a character uh, of an array of characters. Then character at should return the character at a given index. Integer length should uh, return the length of the uh, string. My string substring from the beginning to the end should return the range from the beginning to the end. Uh, those characters in a new string of the type my string one. Similarly. To lowercase should return a new string in lowercase. Equals should compare the current string with another string. String uh, uh, value of should transform an integer to a string. 
and split should split a string into my string objects. So let's implement this. We are going to implement with our own methods and not with the ones that Java provides with the string class. So let's start with uh, defining the class. Now, we can sort internally the string as an array of characters, the same way that we have it in the constructor. Or we can store it as a string. But since this is a class that is not supposed to use the class string too much, because we are actually using it in a couple of places, let's implement it with an array of characters. Now, the truth is that since it's encapsulated, you can define as private here anything that you want. Uh, it's in fact, that is the whole idea of encapsulation. How is it implemented internally? It doesn't matter. All that it matters is what is the class signature? What are the methods, the public methods that are available to users of this class? So the fact that internally you store an array of characters or you store, in fact, in this case, a string, let's call it S. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's private. You can implement it any way you want. Okay. So now we can define our constructor. We can define our character at. We can define other methods. We can define our length function. We can define our substring function. So the assumption here is that the begin and end are actually part of the string. So how do we implement it? We first create a new character array, which is a new character array of the distance between end and begin. Usually the understanding is that the last character should not be actually part of the uh, string, so we're not going to add one to it. It will basically be from begin to end, but not including the end character. Now we can define a for loop, and we start with begin with one variable and with zero, the second variable that iterates in the second uh, loop, as long as i is strictly less than and and i is incremented with one at every step and j is incremented with one at every step cars of two of j is assigned cars of i now we return a new my string one of cars of two. That's the implementation of my string one. To lowercase, we have to convert every letter from the string into lowercase. And create a new string. So again, let's actually just copy the code from above. We create a string of the same size with cars dot length and now with one for loop for every index starting from zero as long, long as the index is less than k 
cars two dot length. If the character of i is between lowercase, it's greater than equal with lowercase a, uppercase a, and is less than equal than z, then we are going to assign to cars 2 of i the corresponding letter in lowercase. So it will be the character at i minus the character for a plus the character for lowercase a. Else, we are just going to copy the character from the first string to the second. Finally, we are going to return a new my string one of cars of two. And one more thing, we need to cast this to a character. Done. Next problem. Equals. We have to check if two strings are equal. For that, first we need to check the sizes of the two character arrays. So if the sizes are not equal, if cars.length is different, then s.cars.length, then basically we can return false because they are not equal. Otherwise, we need to check them character by character. So for every index, If the characters are different, and since these are characters, we can compare them with uh, not equal. Return false. If we didn't return false, then we return true. That means that all the characters were the same. Done. Next value of translates from an integer into a string. So, for this first thing, we have to find the length of that uh, in characters of that string. So, for that, let's define an integer count. And while the integer i is less than, uh, greater than 10, greater than equal with 10, we increment the count. Let's start, we'll need a second value. Let's start with a new i, some copy of i, which initially was equal with i. As long as new i is greater than 10, new i is divided with 10 and we collect the quotient. So after we have, basically we iterate through this new i, we have how many uh, digits does new i, uh, does, does i have? So at this point we can create a new character array. Of the size. Of count. Plus one. Now we have to actually copy the elements from the remainders. This from the right hand side. We need to copy the values into uh, the new string. 
So let's start to do it with a for loop for every integer i, starting with the last character as long as i is strictly greater than greater than equal with zero and i is decremented with one at every step cars of i is assigned the character which is let's start with new i actually we can use i because we don't we will not need it anymore and i is already defined so let's change this to j character of j is i modulo 10 and i again is divided with 10 done and finally we return a new my string one of cars we are done with this method too next split Split is quite difficult, so I'm going to use a string, the classical method split, just because uh, I can. And this uh, internally I can implement it in any way I want. So for this, let's split that string. Let's call it a for array. Is the result of s dot split on a space good and or no this is a okay we need to create a new string for the current characters and then invoke split on the string s so now we split it on the space now we have for each one of these strings I need to create a new my string to uh, to return that uh, my string array so let's create a my string array with the same size with a let's call it r which is a new array of same length with a and for every integer from 0 to the length of a R of I is assigned a new my string of A of I to character array. And finally we return R. Done. So now we finally implemented this entire class in Java. Okay. Good. Circle 2D is similar to rectangle that I did it earlier. And for all the classes implement drivers. So actually let's just implement a driver for the string class. So let's call it test my string 1 so my string 1 let's call it m1 it's a new my string one of let's say that we pass in hello world character array okay we actually haven't implemented the two string method to actually print this string so let's do that too and that will simplify our work here so public string to string that 
returns a new string for the character array. Okay, so now if I want to test my M1, that will invoke the method to string and it will print the string hello world. Okay, so now let's test, just test all the methods. So one method that I see is the character at. Let's test it. So let's see what's the character at index 1. And that is E. Cool. Next. Let's see the length. It's 11. Let's uh, extract the substring. And the beginning is from 2 to 3, 2 to 5, 2 to 5. That's LLO. And two lowercase. Equals does M one equals M one in lowercase. No, because one is in uppercase and one is in lowercase. Value of so value of is a static method. Okay. So it looks like this one doesn't work properly. Yes, we are actually not creating the strings. We are we are we should add the character for zero to the digit that we are getting. And we got two three, so now the only other problem is the indices. You can fix that. Uh, there is a problem with indices, but now the implementation is almost correct. We don't extract the last value of the quotient. We'll debug it later. Okay, so split. Split, you can test it yourself. That's all for today, and uh, please do it. I will correct that uh, value off uh, soon, and I will give you the solution. Thank you very much.